Good morning and welcome to this service from St Barnabas Church this morning. Somewhat weird to be standing here uh, all by myself, but uh, even though I know you're not here physically with me, nonetheless, I feel that we are gathered together in God's sight on this Mothering Sunday. This is not the kind of service that we were expecting to be holding today. And uh, this uh, technology that we're using is all very new to each of us. So I do hope you'll forgive us uh, if it fails us from time to time. I was very keen that many, as many people as possible could be involved from across the two churches in the service this morning. So we've got songs um, and prayers and Bible readings and a reflection from different people from across the churches. I do hope um, that you will enjoy joining with us on this Mothering Sunday. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, although the world around us is in turmoil, in our worship today, remind us of your steadfast love and reassure us of your presence. Make us thankful for the love and care of those who have been mothers to us. Help us as we sing your praise, confess our sins and bring our prayers to you, to know the Holy Spirit at work within us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Recognising our dependence upon God, we are invited to come and confess before him those times when we failed to live up to his values. As we come before God, let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, and our failure to love as Christ has loved us. Your love gives us life from the moment of conception, yet we fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good. We seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, yet we ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Mothering Sunday God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for those affected by this coronavirus. God of love and hope, you made the world and care for all creation. But the world feels strange right now. The news is full of stories about coronavirus. Some people are worried that they might get ill. Others are anxious for their family and friends. Be with them and help them to find peace. We pray for the doctors and nurses and scientists and all who are working to discover the right medicines to help those who are ill. Thank you that even in these anxious times, you are with us. Help us to put our trust in you and keep us safe. Amen. We're now going to sing our first song this morning, uh, and played by Amanda Clark, and that is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. We find the words will appear on the screen. Still for the presence of the Lord, the Lord. 
to have our Bible readings. The first of these will be read by Tim Ellis from St Mary's and is our next in our series of readings on Genesis as we look at God's creative work. And then this will be followed by our Gospel reading from uh, Richard Ranson who's going to be reading to us from Luke's Gospel. You will find the first reading on page one of the NIV Bible. The reading is from Genesis chapter one, beginning at verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as a sign to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, chapter 2, verse 33 to 35. Glory to you, O Lord. The child's father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're now going to have our sermon, and I'm delighted to say that uh, Caroline from St Barnabas uh, has, I think with Becky's help, put together uh, a short video uh, reflecting on our two readings. She uh, filmed it out and about as she went on a walk round uh, Derby Green uh, and so the quality of the audio in some places um, is not so great but I do hope you'll nonetheless be able to hear and uh, get a lot from all that she has to offer to us. Today, being Mothering Sunday, we celebrate the role of women. 
When I first started thinking about today, I thought I'd talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus, blessed with the Son of God. What a precious gift. What responsibility to believe the messenger angels, to trust, to know the future of the child foretold by the gifts given by the wise men and to follow God's will and purpose to the very end before own mothering instincts of protection, full on faith. Our reading from Luke confirms this and we're thankful that Mary had Joseph beside her because being mum is kinder working in a team. However, we're studying creation. So let's go back to the very beginning. God is speaking his creation into being. Let there be, and it was so, and God saw that it was good. Lessons learned so far. Appreciate the light. Don't hide your light under a bucket. Look after the environment. Don't let the waters become stagnant. Keep active and alive in Christ. Look after all creation, respecting the creator. Today's reading has God speaking the day and night into being along with the stars and the seasons. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And as a mum, boy, how you need the night to come so you can get some sleep. As a new mum, praying baby will sleep just one more minute. Every bit of sleep is so precious. And then you get to that stage when you have to convince them it's bedtime even though it's still light because it's summertime and the sun stays awake longer and when they wake early because the sun has woken up early too. By the time children have become teenagers, the routine of night for sleeping and day for learning, socialising and seasons to look forward to works, adds a rhythm to life, has us practising life and gaining experiences, and being mum is a big part of that process. We all do being mum different. I think it's one of the hardest job descriptions out there. Even with the COVID-19 pandemic, mum has to make a lot of new, never thought about decisions. God has given us a huge responsibility. We create our own little world within God's and pray for his protection over our families. I asked some of the youth to help me out here. Who's your favourite mum in the Bible, I asked. Some jokingly replied, God. Then gave a second serious response. But yeah, God did create and that is the job of mum. where she saw opportunity, she was a decision maker. Sarah did credit God with the eventual birth of her son, naming him Isaac, meaning laughter. Becoming a mum is not a given. There are no guarantees. Some pay fortunes for IVF, getting into debt, destroying their relationships. Some miscarry, and it's hard to get past that loss, or believe it will ever be blessed with a child. Only when you give up your want, or in Sarah's case, realise that the surrogate baby Ishmael is your husband's and the promise may not involve you, that maybe it wasn't such a clever idea to use your status over another woman to provide an heir rather than trusting God's promise and that realisation makes yourself vulnerable enough for God to know your heart and bless you. Sarah at that point was blessed with Isaac, God's plan and heir. It's such an overwhelming want to be blessed with our own child that it can take over Abraham was obedient to Sarah. We know that he thought she was gorgeous. He was a bit smitten. They had a good marriage. A mum in a secure family unit is the ideal. And I would hope that she learned to trust God through that journey. I'd hope we all would. Another mum of this story is Hagar, possession of Sarah. This is Becky's favorite mum of the Bible. Hagar was Sarah's slave girl, given to Abraham to be her surrogate. Sarah needed an heir to look after her in her old age and to carry on the family line. To Becky and a lot of women, including me, this doesn't seem fair. Back in the day though, it was the norm. So Hagar didn't have a choice. 
when Hagar became pregnant with Ishmael, she was made to feel uncomfortable. She ran away, met God at a well, where many heroes in the Bible met him, and named the well after that meeting. Only men named places. She must have felt empowered. He gave her the same blessing as Abraham, and to the Islamic faith she is known as the mother of believers. Hagar was in essence a single mum, so I too have empathy, and I love how she turned her story around. Another hero whose story began at a well, Rebecca. The naming of my Becky was inspired by this story. Although, also being inspired by Harry Enfield, I settled for a more creative, Becky Lulu. <laughs> I think I must have been humoured with the youngest Jacob being seen as the favourite and gaining his father's blessing and heir to the family line. My eldest sister and I still openly try and get our dad to say who's the favourite. And my two fight over which is my favourite. And it's true. Isaac favoured Esu, whereas Rebecca favoured Jacob. That sounds fair, each having a favourite. Rebecca, being a wise woman of God, knew that Esu had kind of given away his blessing by marrying outside of the family. A similar reason as Sarah, in a way. So Isaac was to marry as God intended and marry from within the line of Abraham's people. So as a mum, do I have a favourite? No. Just as Isaac loved Esu because he was a bit of a lad, hunting and active, doing the things that he would have enjoyed to do, if not for his own protective mum. Just as Rebecca loved Jacob, the homely one. I love both my daughters for who they are. Becky, my deep thinker, who will change the world and fight for equality and defeat prejudices. And Daisy, who will continually build her resilience to whatever is thrown at her. I'll be a strong woman that no one will mess with. Both make me laugh out loud. Both know that God is in control. I really don't know which would have God's blessing. I pray both. As a mum, I love seeing my girls arrange movie nights or trips out and generally getting on. I hate seeing them fight. And in the story of Leah and Rachel, we find two sisters that fought. Both felt inadequate for different reasons. Some mental health first aid was most likely needed to build their self-efficacy and nurture self-compassion, a huge concern for two mothers today. Neither were aware of their blessings. Between them and their maids, they birthed the 12 tribes of Israel, the line of Judea taking us to Ruth and her mother-in-law Naomi, both widows, both relying on each other and the welfare system, a system still in place today and a godsend to many. They were strengthened and guided by their faith in God, leading them to their kinsman redeemer, a child is born, the father of Jesse, the line to Jesus, born of mother. The story is about faith and bringing people into God's community. Ruth was a Moabite, but her loyalty to Naomi and her God, our God, is rewarded by inclusion into the community of believers. And this brings me to the message that I believe God is wanting me to share, one of community. With COVID-19 shaking us up, it has us looking outward to those in need, the vulnerable, the elderly and the isolated. It has us bringing about a community spirit, trusting in God, counting our blessings. Mothering Sunday always falls on the fourth day of Lent, three weeks before Easter. Traditionally, a day to honour the Mother Mary, returning to your mother church for a special service, something of a pilgrimage, reuniting families. Today is going to be a bit weird, what with social distancing and not being permitted to gather at church. And there's going to be many families not reuniting, following guidelines to protect loved ones. Maybe much of the merchandise will be left on the shelves as consumerism is put on hold. Maybe it's time to go back to basics and show love without putting money out here. We have phones and FaceTime and that gives us opportunity to listen and give of our time in other ways, making sure basic needs are met with acts of loving kindness. The needs of our mothers, yes, but also to those around us. I know as a mother, when I see my girls are showing love and compassion to others, it's the best gift ever to see, to see love in action. We are living in unprecedented times where social distancing has removed social contact from our daily routine. We need to find new ways to show love, new ways to do church, not confined to a building, but as a people. We are family. 
we are one body. If one of us is weak, we all pull together, a community of believers. At this sacred time, I pray that as we approach Easter, COVID-19 passes over us and is defeated. God is pulling us back to community. He's most certainly got our attention. So let us be obedient to the simplicity of creation and turn away from the complexities consumerism has created. Keep safe, know that you're loved, and let's look after each other, trusting and seeking God's guidance. Pray, listen for his voice, and be mindful of his beautiful creation that surrounds us. COVID-19 is man's mucky hand on God's creation. I pray God is with all world leaders, whispering in their hearts, ways to crush this pandemic and put people before power. God bless you all. Thank you, Caroline, and thank you, Judy. As we continue this morning, we're now going to invite Jane Hughes to lead us in some prayers. And I believe you might have to stop the video to go and find a couple of bits to join in. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. Today's prayers are going to be interactive. So the idea is that you're going to draw yourself a prayer tree and then after I've said a prayer, you can then draw a leaf on your tree and write the name of the person or the people who you think of. So it should look something like that. Or if you don't want to do drawing you can just think of the person in your mind who the Holy Spirit has inspired you to think of with these prayers so let us pray to the Lord who is our refuge and stronghold father we pray for the health and well-being of our nation that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry May they know the deep peace of Christ. Father, we pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they may make wise decisions. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Father, we pray for doctors, nurses and medical researchers that their skill and insights may bring about many to be restored to health. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Father God, we pray for all involved in the production, distribution and selling of food. May you give them strength and wisdom to keep the food coming into our shops. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Father God, we pray for all who are key workers at this time. Those who work in the energy sector, those who collect our rubbish and many others. May you protect them and guide them whilst they work to enable our well-being. May they know the deep peace of Christ. We pray, Father, for your blessing on our local community, that we may be alert to the needs of the isolated, the housebound, and those in distress, so all may know they're loved for and cared for. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Father God, we pray for the ill, the dying and the bereaved, that they may know your comfort and peace. May they know the deep peace of Christ. 
Father God, we pray for all countries as they face coronavirus. Especially we pray for those less equipped than ourselves to cope. May they know the deep peace of Christ. Father God, we thank you for all these people, made and loved by you. You know their needs better than we do. And you also care for them even more than we do. They are carved in the palm of your hands. Take our prayers, we ask you, and use them to help bring about the things that are best for them. Keep us faithful in praying regularly and doing whatever we can. For we pray in Jesus' sake. Amen. We're now going to sing our final song. This is uh, one of the ones which I know the children really enjoy um, and which I think is very apt considering all that's happening in the world around us. We're going to sing My Lighthouse.
Just before we finish our service this morning, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who took part, sending me videos and audio and uh, helping me with the slides and all sorts of other things. Thank you to everyone involved. As I said at the beginning, I do apologise for those areas where it's been difficult to hear or to follow along with what's happening. As we uh, grapple with the technology, I'm sure we will get better at doing this. But it's been great to join with you this morning. Just a couple of notices from me. It wouldn't be church without notices, so just a couple from me. Firstly, um, if you are struggling in any way and you need help, please don't hesitate to contact us um, or someone else from the church if you uh, are already aware of someone who's willing to help you. But please don't uh, hesitate to contact one of the clergy if you do think uh, that we could help in any way. Uh, secondly, uh, our food bank remains open. Um, and um, if you're under 70 and might have some spare time on a Monday or a Thursday afternoon, um, or indeed if you are around at other times during the week and might be able to deliver uh, things to people um, in a safe way, um, we'd love to hear from you as uh, many of our volunteers are now self-isolating because um, of their age or the conditions they've got. Uh, thirdly, uh, just to remind you that at 7 o'clock this evening, the Archbishop's asked each of us to light a candle and put it in our windows to, um, and then to say a prayer. That's at 7 o'clock this evening um, to pray for this uh, virus and the world um, and our response to it. Um, and finally, I do just uh, hope and pray that you would have wherever you are a very wonderful Mothering Sunday. Let's close in a word of blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.